show this to you because I've been seeing a lot of news groups, people asking about these. This is a very, very common tree. And I'm going to go into details about, you know, the bark, the leaf shape, that sort of thing. If you see this, this is a mulberry tree. This is ripe mulberries. Now I'm going to tell you a story. I've probably told this before on YouTube. When I was a little kid, I would come home with my hands purple. And my mom would be like, you been eating those mulberries? And I'd be like, no. But, you know, she could tell I was lying because these will stain your hands. But they are really good, so let them stain your hands. Oh my, so many memories, y'all. Man, even when they're not quite ripe all the way, they are still good. Now these make an excellent jam. They can make, you can make pies, cobblers, just about anything out of these. Anything you can do with any other berry, you can make with these. You can make ice cream, you can make jam, pies, cobblers, um, syrups. They're really good. So now let me show you something. This right here is what the bark looks like. This one right here. If you notice, it's got lines that have like a really shallow, kind of a wide groove in it. You can kind of see there, that's my first finger, how wide the grooves are. They're not very deep. And it's that way all the way down to the ground. They're generally a very bushy tree because they grow in understories. So they'll get about 10 feet or so tall and then they start to grow outward to reach the light as you can see here. So over there it's understory. You can kind of see how the branches kind of reach way out. Matter of fact, the branches are probably wider than what the tree is tall. But these get some amazing berries on them. You have no idea how good these are. They do stain your fingers. Man. They can get kind of big. You see kind of the juice there, what I mean by staining your fingers. And now I'm going to show you the leaves. Because the leaves are very big. See that? It's about the size of my hand. It's kind of like a heart shape in a way that the top part of it don't really have like a very deep, like it don't come down into a heart. But if you look at it in general, it's kind of like a heart shaped leaf. If you've got one of these, you need to keep an eye on these. I'll tell you another thing is too, they're kind of a weak tree. So it's very common for them to break off a limb because you can see the limbs are really wide. And matter of fact, a couple of years ago, I actually lost this, a big part of this tree. Uh, I don't remember where it broke off at now. But I didn't have mulberries on this tree back here for several years because basically just had to wait on the limbs to grow more. Now I've got another one that's up by the building I can show you. And there's probably other ones around here, but I know of three. And hold on a second, let me go show you the other one. Now there's a reason why specifically that I'm showing you this tree. You can kind of see the leaves right there. You can kind of see them up there too. You notice how there's like huge gaps. 
like there's those leaves huge gap there's those leaves huge gap there's those leaves up there I'm going to make a point about this being an understory tree because the actual tree is way back here <laughs> <coughs> see right there see the bark way back here it's uh 20 feet from those branches you see over there and that's kind of what they do they grow like that there's another one over there too but they grow they generally always start back in the woods and then they grow toward the edge of the woods. So what I'm trying to tell you is, walk along the edge of your woods. If you have if you have woods, you'll probably find you a mulberry tree. And this time of the year, into May, first part of June. Now see this one over here. Don't get as much sunlight, so these berries aren't near as ripe yet, and they're not near as big. They're just now green. But again, we got the huge leaves that are kind of like sort of heart shaped. The leaves also, they kind of feel like <clears throat> they got a little bit of roughness to them. They almost feel like a really fine, like 800 grit sandpaper. <laughs> like when you rub it, you can kind of hear but yeah, so these are great trees to have. By the way, you can take, if, if you know someone has got one of these trees and you don't have one, you can either cut off part of a limb and then root it, or <clears throat> mulberries are another tree that works very well for air layering. They actually work amazingly well with air layering air layering did i even say it right the first time i swear i took trip all over my tongue half the time when post cancer anyways they make great trees for air layering you basically just take and come over like you would take this limb right here see how it's got the new green growth and then it's got the older brownish growth you would want to put your cup on this section right here Fill it with dirt, keep it moist, secure the cup so that it can't fall off the limb. And in probably one to three months, it'll grow roots. And you can just take it, cut it off, take it back to your house and plant it just like a normal tree. And you would have a perfect match of a mulberry tree. And uh, anyways, I've got a video on air layering. You can actually clone most fruits, most trees, most berries that way it's a really good technique to know it's super simple you basically set it up keep the soil moist walk away from it go back every few days check the soil and wait until it grows roots and then you got a perfect clone way faster than trying to grow something from seed also anyways that's all about mulberry trees i wanted to bring that up because i was back looking at the bees and noticed that mulberry tree back there is about to get harvested probably tomorrow i'm gonna let it go another day and uh i'm gonna have me some cobbler or jam or something out of it thanks for watching as always god bless you god bless your families god bless your homesteads